Traffic robberies have been a menace to the residents and police force of Lagos State have battled for quite some time. Um, well, however, it's, it's the state that is now experiencing an increase in this sort of crime and other forms of robbery. The hoodlums loiter around either on motorcycles or on foot and wait for a breakdown of vehicles or traffic and swoop on to unsuspecting drivers with dangerous objects, including guns. Uh, they break their door screens or their windscreens, um, open them and rob their belongings, uh, rob them of their belongings. Now, the frequency of these attacks have increased probably as more people have lost their jobs due to the downturn and the gridlocks as a result of widespread construction in the metropolis. Well, joining us to discuss this is Muiwa Adejobi. He is the public relations officer of the Lagos State Police Force. Thank you very much, Mr. Muiwa, for joining us. Yeah, good evening. How are you? Fine, thank you. Now, let's, let's, let's go straight to this. Um, we know that Lagos is the, co the country's economic center, and every single person who comes to Lagos uh, is coming in hopes of getting a better life. Um, and, and Lagos has been known for some time to have relative peace, uh, nothing as bad as we are experiencing now. So I would ask you as uh, a police officer, what exactly do you think is responsible for the new rise in these robbery cases all across the, st the state? There is, there, is, there is nothing new about the incident. Uh, robbery, robbery in traffic is not a new development in the state. Uh, this has, has, has been in existence before now, and it's not, it's not that it's, it's on the increase, like it's generally been, been speculated in the social media or in the news. It's just because people who are victims are just conscious of the fact that they need to come up and circulate the news. But the, another thing is, you know, the government of the state is having many constructions, ongoing constructions uh, across the state. And these constructions uh, technically will, will, will lead to artificial traffic. And that's why these, these bad boys are always um, trying to seize this opportunity to attack people in traffic. So it is not that the scene, the incident is on the, on the increase. Uh, the way it's being generally circulated. So you're telling, so you're telling me that we're making much ado about nothing. You're saying that these incidents are not as many as we make them seem. So what would people gain from making, um, you know, these reports, maybe false ones, to make, is it to make the police look bad or make the state look bad? Well, well I, like I always say, most of these things you read in the news are not recorded are not recorded with us in the police, police stations. Many of these cases were not recorded. There was a particular case of uh, a video or picture on social media where a coastal boss was alleged to have been stopped, occupants robbed. As I still with you, we did not record such a case in the state. Most of these cases are not known to the police. Very few isolated cases were reported to us in the command that we can say we have these cases on our record and we are working on them. However, despite this, despite this, the Commissioner of Police, Lagos TCP, Aki Modumosu, met with the governor and we, they had a robust discussion on how to tackle uh, these, these menace. Hmm. And I'm sure that's one of the reasons the governor decided to, to produce or to buy and present 200 motorbikes to us because our patrol vehicles will not help us in tackling these menace. You just, you, you quickly just so you, you, you just you motorbike. just spoke yourself into my next question because I was going to ask. You said that most of these incidences are not in your records, and I was going to ask. Um, if the police covers every single incident, because there are many times that things happen and the police is nowhere to be found. I'll give you an example. Um, just a few blocks away from my office here in Victoria Island, a supermarket was, was robbed in broad daylight. Four of my colleagues were trapped in that supermarket. The police was called immediately when that incident started taking place. No police officer showed up till it finished. 
So every, every incident may not be recorded by the police, but does it mean that those things did not happen? There, there is no how. You, you, you discuss, you have discussion, analysis, analysis of security situation based on empirical facts. You don't speculate when you are analyzing security situation in a state. If you don't have these cases recorded, it's going to affect our crime statistics. How is that our fault if our the judgment. police doesn't show up to take records of something that has occurred? How is that my problem? It's the problem of the police. I, and this is not based on empirical evidence. If something happens, the police is called, they don't show up because they don't have a car or they don't have fuel in the vehicle. How is that my problem, that you don't have records of that incident? Well, there, there, is, there, is, there is no how you want to be discussing or analyzing security without, without facts. If, if, you have, if, if you experience an act, of a criminal act, and you have not reported to the police, you are not doing us any good, you are not doing the state any good. The, most of these traffic robberies and the likes are silent robberies. Many of them, the, 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 the perpetrators will not even fire a shot. A police might be at 10 meters, 20 meters, 30 meters away from the scene of this incident. Yet, if they have not fired a shot, such, such operation would not be so attractive to anybody. You will know. Most of, the, most of these cases that people, people report and people are saying, are speaking about the uh, silent robbery that you would not know. And you will not notice that these guys are actually perpetrating anything around you. The first thing remains that when we, are, we want to do crime statistics and analysis of incidences in the state, any case that is not reported will not be captured. And definitely saw your thing will affect our judgment okay. as far the security situation in the state. Yeah. The only appeal we can we appeal, the only appeal now is we want to appeal to negotiations to always endeavor to report cases. Even if it's an ordinary case of assault, if someone slaps you at the bus stop, let it be recorded. It has a meaning in crime statistics and okay. it's very, very important. You don't approximate right. in statistics. Okay. So it's very crucial to us that we need to have proper and adequate record of incidences in the state to assist the police carry out proper evaluation Let's of security networking in the state. Let's move away from that. Let's talk about the hotspots. Now, I'm just going to give you a few that I can get from the top of my head. Um, and I want to know if you know some of these hotspots. Um, uh, there's, there's, there's a hot spot in Ojota. Uh, people have also fingered the MKO Garden, uh, Sele Bus Stop, etc. Even the um, axis of Aja, Leki, Aja Express. Uh, those are hot spots. Now, many people have also uh, criticized the fact that some of we these things, one uh, these things happen few minutes away from or a few meters away from where police officers are, and some of them even. I have, have said that, you know, maybe policemen are in collusion with these guys. They probably um, have some form of silent, um, you know, um, agreement for these people to be able to carry out those kind of activities. And you have said something about the fact that sometimes gunshots are not let out. Some have had gunshots involved and the police still does not come to the aid of these people. So um, have you ever heard of any such allegation that policemen have been um, you know, in some form of um, um, partnership with these criminal um, elements. That's not, that is not possible. No police officer that is putting on this uniform. I think we lost uh, Muiwa at DJB there. We'll try to get him back on the phone. But we'll take a break and find out what Nigerians have to say about the insecurity in Nigeria, especially here in Lagos. And when we come back, we'll wrap it up. They should just increase the security. Increase the security and stop corruption. That is just the key to everything. Actually, I feel they should increase more securities. That's all. Securities and make sure they provide jobs, especially in Lagos, because the population in Lagos is too much. That's why so, so many young graduates who don't, who don't have jobs to make money will start going into some kind of... You'll see on the road, they'll tell you to bring your phone for no reason, they'll take it, those kind of stuff. Like. What the Lagos State can do is that let them... Pre 
um, make a, a space for, for people that don't have work. There are many graduates that did not have work. They are working. Many of them, they are driving keke na pep. They stop them from not driving keke na pep. They stop some from Okada for not riding Okada anymore. They are talking, they are trying to protect our health. But what they are trying to do, they don't try to make another alternative for us, for we to live long. The best thing for the Lagos government, right, to do um, is put more uh, military men, more security, more cameras, security cameras, you know, at least to be able to figure out the people who are doing this stupid act, you know, that's my take. Here's my take. We need to do more than talk a good game or, or issue press statements in the insecurity spreading across the Federation like wildfire. I mean, governments at the center and governments across the states, legislators and security agencies have to form a synergy and come up with watertight plans to put an end to this multifaceted problem. Let's not politicize it. It's not time to wax lyrical on the issue. Let's come up with lasting solutions. We cannot say that we want to address insecurity in Nigeria without wanting to probe the core issues that could have led to these violent attacks and killings. It's time that we sit together, leaders and the led, and have a tough conversation of restructuring and devolution of powers. No more hide and seek. It's time for real talk, Nigerians, and it has to happen now or never. I am Mary Anakun thanking you for watching. We apologized because we could not come to continue with that conversation with the police PR. But we'll be back with more security issues on Plus Politics. Have a good evening.